Hi there, and welcome to the Keys to Leadership Show. I am your genial host, Richard Walker, and it's live. I'm in London. You are wherever you are. I am where I am. And this is a very historic episode for reasons that you probably know already. That's why you're here. Um, I'm very excited. I'm very, I'm very, 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 very excited. And I don't get nervous. I don't get butterflies usually. But I've got some uh, wildlife going on down here because, whew, it's going to be a seriously seriously good time um this is the keys leadership show based on bishop dag Hewitt mills incredible wonderful book the art of leadership if you don't have a copy you need to get one to participate in this great show and we've been having some great episodes but on last week's episode if you're watching um we usually have a nice lady by the name of demi who shares with us from books according to aol uh, chapter 24 which is if you can't read you can't lead so she shares with us from a book every week and last week something went wrong went wrong with her video and that's my fault i apologize my bad this week though i wanted to switch things up and to make it up to her i'm going to give the floor to demi to start with um, Demi, are you there? How are you today? And uh, why why do you look so glum? Hi, Richard. Hi, people. If you guys know what just happened to me, you'll understand why my face was like that. I literally just dropped on the floor. I was taking a video. I was happy. I was just there like, hey, guys, how you doing? My name's Demi. This is the book I'm going to be reading. You know, no, no, no. Yeah, you know. And then suddenly my, my chair just shifted. And then my body just shifted. And then I just went pew, and the chill went pew, and I was just on the floor. And it was all caught on camera, which was very, very, very embarrassing. But I'm I'm fine, we thank God. <laughs> it was just embarrassing. Oh my gosh, you guys don't understand. But anyway, um camp. I just came back from camp and it was such a blessing it was so amazing you guys do not understand it was with bishop richard um and it was even on the art of leadership which was such a shock i was like wow this show is the keys to leadership show which is based on the art of leadership and now we're doing a camp on the art of leadership. oh it was just it was just a blessing like i learned so much like it was just one of it was probably the best experience i've had like ugh, i don't even know last camp oh the camps are diff oh no camp is just amazing in general i love camp so much oh my god hmm okay well um i'm glad you had such a good time at camp last week i love camp in case you're wondering it's not a camp where you literally go camping it's a camp whereby you go away for a long time a few days many hours and you spend time in the presence of god and hearing some extremely anointed preaching um i've been to a few camps and they've changed my life to say the least um you mentioned falling off your uh, chair there demi that reminds me of a scripture i think it's in second corinthians where it talks about he that think he standeth should uh take heed lest he fall someone will correct me on it you can leave me a comment or something but um it just reminds me that hey you know you shouldn't get too much of a big head about anything. You think you're doing well. You think you're doing good. Bam! You can fall just like that. The enemy can catch you out. So don't get a big head about anything. Just tell yourself the truth. Like um, one of the Art of Leadership chapters talks about. And speaking of the Art of Leadership. Um, yeah, Bishop Richard, you mentioned. Bishop Richard A. was preaching from the Art of Leadership. That's uh, pretty cool. That means it's a pretty well sought after book, don't you think? And today on the Keys to Leadership show, Reverend Jerry from all the way across the world, which I thought was Australia, but actually in Vanatu, an island I'd never heard of till today, is going to be joining us on the show. I, you know, that's probably why you're here, um, unless you're here for me, in which I've got nothing to give you. But it's going to be a great show. It's going to be an awesome show. 
Let's quickly have a look and have a think about what we were looking at last week on the Keys to Leadership show, the fifth episode. So last week on the Keys to Leadership show, we were looking at AOL chapter 75, gain control of your domestic life. Firstly, if you don't know what somebody asked me, what does AOL mean? Uh, last week AOL means art of leadership okay so you know and obviously the chapter number right after it so that would be the art of leadership chapter 75 and we're learning about gaining control of your domestic life I will talk to you very briefly about it um, you can of course go back and rewatch it um, but it is more important to gain control of your domestic life the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 32 and I'm paraphrasing a little bit that it is better to have self-control than to take a city. It's better to have self-control than to control other people. You've got to learn how to control your life before you can control others. So you've got a Bishop Dagwood Mills, the author of The Art of Leadership, talked about looking at your school, your job, your home, and your marriage. If those four things are in order, then you're on the road to leadership, your school, your job, your home, and your marriage. Do you have control of those things? Then you can be a great leader. If you don't, then start working on those things. And that's my very brief recap of last week. Go back and watch it. Let's go on to today's episode of the Key Leadership Show, which is based on AOL Chapter 20, Rally People Around You. You can turn your Art of Leadership chapter there. But first, as I said... Last week, Dami did not get to share with us, so she is going to share with us very shortly. But um, AOL Chapter 20, folks, rally people around you. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you consider yourself a people person? I don't particularly consider myself a people person. I have always needed help in, like, talking to people and that sort of thing. I'm actually quite a shy person, quite nervous, often wondering about what people think about me and that sort of thing. But you've got to put all that aside and you've got to be able to rally people around you if you want to be a leader. And that is what this great chapter is about. And Bishop Dagwood Mills outlines 22 steps in which you can learn to rally people around you. And I'm not going to talk about all 22 of them because there's no time for that. And we've got a very special guest who is going to do more than you could imagine, more than I could imagine. Um... One of the great points in the book, one of the points that I enjoy very much, is to show interest in people's lives. That's one of the ways of rallying people around you. If when you talk to people, you only show interest in what you want to do, in your achievements, in your goals, and your aspirations, then eventually people are just going to kind of, you know, walk away because they realize that you do not have an interest in them. You don't love them. So you've got to show an interest in people's lives. I mean, like those four things that I mentioned, that's what our world sort of revolves around, our domestic lives, our school, our job, our home, and our marriage, if we're married. If you're not married, then try and get there. Um, that's one of the great points that is very important to me. So I always look and see whether conversation is revolving around me or whether it's revolving around the other person, how much of the percentage of the conversation is on me and how much is on the other person. If it's, if it's mostly about me, then the conversation has a problem. You know, I have a pastor. I have a very, very cool pastor, a reverend minister. And one thing I noticed about him is that whenever I speak to him, he never ever really talks about himself when he's preaching sure you know lots of examples of his life he's very open like that but when he's talking to you one to one when you're going one-on-one -on -one with the great one like the rock used to say 
when you speak to him one to one, he is very forthcoming and focused on you. He doesn't talk about you know himself. When you come to him with your problem or your happy story, he's totally one hundred percent focused on you. And I've learned something about that to always turn conversation on other people. That is an awesome leader. That's what awesome leaders do. And you realize also that quiet people, quiet people are actually sometimes quiet because they don't want to talk about anything but themselves. Quiet people, they're sometimes too into themselves. Perhaps the reason they're so quiet is that they have no interest in talking about something else. So if you're a naturally quiet person, if that's how you describe yourself, make sure it's not because you're selfish. Make sure it's because you're not too focused on yourself. Make sure you're quiet because you're quiet. So please show an interest in other people's lives. There's so many great points here. So many great points. You should check them out. You should get your book and read them. I can't talk about all 22. I really, really wish I could, but I won't do it justice. As I said, Demi is here and she has a book that she wants to share with us from as I said last week, she did not get a chance to share because I kind of messed up the video. So this week, for about three or four minutes, and I'm watching the clock, Demi, she will share with us from a very special book. I hear it's um, How to Become a Strong Christian. Yes. And then we'll be going straight to the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the anointed and affable Reverend Jerry. So stay tuned. But Demi, what do you have for us? from how you can become a strong Christian. So let me just read the blurb to you. So having received Jesus Christ as your Lord and person, oh no, Savior, you are saved. You are a born again Christian and your name is written in the book of life. Your question is, what is the next step to take? That's a question. Having become a Christian is a good step, but it is just the beginning. You ought to become a good, strong Christian. So how do I do that? In this classic book, you will learn the steps to take to be and stay a strong Christian who is also ready for death or for the rapture. So a question that we all need to ask ourselves firstly is, if I died today, then where would I go? Like, if something happened, God forbid, but if something happened, like, right now, what would my final destination be? That's something that we always need to think about and not just do things in life. Um blindly what the main focus is on is ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 which says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might i used to think that i could inherit christianity because i was born into a christian family i felt as if i was just automatically i was just automatically going to heaven even though i just you know never went to go and get my life this was many many years ago though that's not the way it works out we actually need to have our own personal relationship with him so we need to become a christian first of all and that's a step that we need to take ourselves but that's just the first step as it said in the blurb that's just the beginning we need to make sure that we're strong christians at the end of the day so that we can accomplish so many different things i'll go through like six points in fact just to let you know before i you know move on um but you know, so, much, so many of us are strong, like we go to the gym, we work out, we flex the muscles, like look, 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 like he's flex, flexing the, oh my gosh, why do I sound like flex, flexing the muscles, that's what he's doing, um, in, in, on the front of the book, but, yeah, we're strong in so many different things, it could be academics, it can be anything, politics, so many different things, but, the main thing that we need to make sure that we are is strong in our faith. We need to make sure that we're strong in the Lord. Let me just give you a few reasons why we must strengthen ourselves. So one, you must strengthen yourself so that you can overcome the wicked one. So I'm sure you guys know who the wicked one is. And the verse for that is 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. So you guys can read that in your own time. The next point is you must strengthen yourself in the Lord because your enemy is planning to attack you again. The verse for that is 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 20 to 22. Um, if you guys saw the first video that I did, Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer, you will understand that 
he is planning to attack you every single step like he will never stop attacking you but we just need to make sure that i think i spoke about it then i'm not sure but we need to make sure that we're always ready and if we if we're strong in god if we're strong in our faith then come on we have we have the word of god to 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 um guide us to to fight for us anyway number three is strengthen yourself so that you can run your race properly mm. okay and the next point is strengthen yourself so that you can withstand in the evil day the verse for that is ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 chapter f i mean number five is strengthen yourself so that you can help other people guys you i'm sure if you you know couldn't swim please don't tell me you're going to go and jump in the pool and try and catch someone that's drowning if you can't swim you're not going to do that because you'll drown and it's exactly the same thing with christianity with your faith you need to become a strong christian so that you can help other people as well like because you can't just help other people if you're not a strong christian you need to be a strong christian to help other people i want to make sure that i'm a mature christian i don't want to remain a baby weak weakling while i'm getting stronger and stronger thank god um but i would like to be a mature christian and i pray that you guys will be too we just need to make sure that we take that step ourselves to develop ourselves um and we will become strong christians but yeah i hope you guys i hope you guys have enjoyed this short taste of wow thank you demi for sharing with us may we all be strong christians in jesus name well as you can see i've got my headphones on because i need to listen as much as you do ladies and gentlemen the man i'm about to introduce to you is a veteran in the faith he is he has been a pastor for over a decade he is a reverend minister he has been a missionary to multiple countries um and he is an all-around great affable anointed man a son a true son of bishop richard ie and i am extremely grateful and extremely honored and extremely proud to introduce to you Reverend Jerry. Reverend Jerry, good evening. It's very late for you, but how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Um, it's also an honor to be for the opportunity to speak to you and your audience. So thank you very much. Well, my audience have been awaiting you, and this is this is gonna be great. I'm awestruck. I'm a kid in a candy store, and I'm gonna eat. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh boy! So, um, as I mentioned, you are on the um, Lighthouse Chapel mission in Vanuatu. Sorry, uh, Vanuatu. That's right, in the South Pacific Islands. One of the South Pacific Islands. Wow. And you started there. Fiji and yeah, well, that's probably the one of the most popular islands that everyone knows. So anyone who knows Fiji, Vanuatu is one of the small islands, not very far from Fiji. Wow, not far from Fiji. Um yeah. you were in Australia before. Um you mentioned it was uh like two to three hours flying from there. Yes, and I was in Australia for I'm um, close to six years, started a mission in uh, Melbourne, and um, I relocated here last December. So I've been here since pioneering another mission. Yes. Wow. The work of God is going on, and it's going strong, isn't it? Oh, certainly. I mean, it's, I, I deem it a great privilege to be to be able to do what I do. You know, it's amazing that you can go to places, different places in this world. And, and even before I came here, I didn't even know that um, Van Watch existed, you know. I mean, I... <laughs> I didn't know it existed until was, we had this conversation. Yes, I... Uh, <laughs> as, you know, and there's a lot of people, you know, and it's amazing how the work of God takes you to places that you've hardly even heard of. And it's amazing to see how there are people here 
people who are just like you and I who are hungry for the gospel. Like me, wow. Who, yeah, yes, <laughs> who want to know about things of God. It's amazing that we know so much. And it's a great privilege for, for us to be able to come out here and share with people and establish the church and build the church and um, help people to know God themselves. Who knows what they'll become in the next 20 years and who knows what this mission will become in 100 years. We never know. We never can tell. But we can just allow ourselves to be used by God and hopefully history will write out the rest of the details. Wow. That's true. You never know what you're going to become in 20 years or what another person is going to become in 20 years. Um, that's, you know, a reminiscent of you because I do believe that you were a product of the Lighthouse Chapel International mission to the United Kingdom that came over here over 20 years ago. You're a fruit of that great mission. Am I right? Absolutely. Um, as you mentioned, as you mentioned, you don't know what they'll become in 20 years um, because uh, it was Lighthouse Chapel's own mission to the United Kingdom that uh, produced you in a sense. Certainly, yes, certainly. I, I um, stumbled into the Lighthouse many, many, many years ago in the UK and um, I think when it first started, not many months after it started, you know, and um, I was a young man lost in the world and um, I didn't know where I was going and God directed me to Lighthouse Chapel International and uh, it's changed my life completely and many years later here I am, um, a minister of the gospel and also out in the mission field. So I think that it is um, it's amazing. We never can tell what God will do in the life of someone. And that's why I think that one of the greatest things we can do is to avail ourselves and to be used by God and to, to go anywhere we are sent to go. Like Bishop says, go somewhere, preach somewhere. You know, go anywhere we are sent to go and um, preach what we are told to preach. And to we'll leave the Lord and the Holy Spirit to do the rest in the lives of the people here. So it's great. Wow. Breach, what you're told to preach. I hear that. I've got to live by that. I think, I th I think that's the main thing. The main thing is go where you're told to go and preach what you're told to preach mm. and let the Lord do the rest. And for us, that's and myself, that's what we've been doing for the last few years that we've embarked on the work of the mission. So that's, yeah, it's, a, it's just a great privilege to do what we do. I can imagine. I can imagine. I can't wait to join myself. Um, so I am building myself up, especially on Bishop's great books, Bishop Daggood Mills' great books, including yes. the including yes. the Art of Leadership. Um, are there any books, though, that um, have helped you along in your development as a leader? Any books that you can recommend that's had a serious impact on your leadership style and uh, your relationship with God? Yes, certainly. In terms of leadership, um, I think one of the first books I read on that particular subject was um, is entitled The um, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. And um, that book was really an eye-opener. I read it in the late 90s, and which really got me thinking because until then, I never thought or saw myself as, as a leader or somebody who could actually operate in that sort of dimension. But then, yes, that book sort of opened my eyes and got me thinking and got me seeing things different. And um, so that's one of the books that have really been, that have really changed my life. And the other one is Our Very Own Out of Leadership, which is a very great um, tool to have with you as you embark on the work of leadership or as you embark on the role of leadership. It's a very good book to have because it's quite straightforward and actually addresses the um, natural problems and issues that arise in our role as leaders. So yes, those two, I mean, I'm, of course, there are many other books I've read, but those are the two that really come to mind at the moment. And if anybody is thinking of leadership, yes, my, my two books um, are that 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and The Art of Leadership by Bishop Dark Hewitt Mills. Yeah, so those are two books that come to mind, really. Wow. John Maxwell, 21 in Irrefutable Laws. That's right. Yes. What a book. So, oh, yes. What a great 21 solid, um, you know, and um, I remember picking up that book 
and 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 I, I must admit that in those days I wasn't quite an avid reader, but the book was so eye-opening that when I picked it up, I couldn't put it down, and it really had an impact on me. Wow. Uh, would you say it made you more of a reader uh, in particular as well? Made you uh, more hungry to read? I think it, it helped me develop that habit, you know, because just around that time, we also had Bishop preaching about more to, 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 to uh, he was preaching more about reading and developing ourselves in the ministry. So I think one of that, that book just sort of got me on that road of reading and um, many other books have helped and I've read many other books. And like I said, the Art of Leadership, very good book. Um, another great book on leadership that 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 one that is quite new in the um, well, not 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 very new, but that has been released recently by the bishop is also the um, the Science of Leadership, a good journal, you know, very very, very powerful book, you know, um, with so many points in it that you can meditate on and help you build yourself up as a leader, especially for anyone who's considering. The mission field, yes, that book is also great to add to the many other books that you can actually have in your library and leadership. Yeah. Wow, a good general. Very yes. new, but very good. Very good book. Oh. In fact, we should even talk more from that. <laughs> yeah. Powerful, powerful. I've got some uh, purchases to make. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, as we mentioned, you came, uh, started with Lighthouse Chapel in the United Kingdom. And yes. you've uh, come across many great leaders, including uh, oh. Bishop Richard Ayi, yes. um, amongst others. Um, and I'm wondering, through your observations and through your training and growing as a Christian even, are there ways that uh, your leaders have been a natural rallying point to you? How, you know, whether, you know, any techniques, anything, any habits that you find that they had that kept you coming back i i think that one of the things that um really struck me about bishop Ridge when i first met him was his ability to, to connect with people you know and um his um ability to also he was it was really apart from everything you could you could you could tell that he was a man who was really led by the spirit of god um in that he his preaching was very relevant and very direct and um it kept us coming back because he was somebody who you knew what he was thinking he would preach and he would he would give relevant examples you know so one of the things that 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 enabled all that happened was that you could actually easily connect to him you know because you could understand what the person was saying prior to 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 that i was i was one of those people who never understood what preachers said i mean i could never understand what preaching was all about you know, I'd go to church and fall asleep, but I just remember coming to church. Mm -hmm. And even though the message was very direct, it was very powerful. And you could see the man was, he could connect, you know, he could connect with people and he could speak directly into the lives of people. And you left, you left there with something deposited in your spirit and you, you, you left thinking about your life, you know, and things that you wanted to change about life. And I think that's one of been the things that has actually been very, helpful in changing many of us who came around that time because we were very young we were lost and we uh, we were in search of we didn't know what we were searching for but we knew we were looking for something and it's like the kind of thing that you, you don't know what you're looking for but when you find ah this is what I'm looking for you know mm -hmm. so you stumble into church and you you, you, you you discover the man is preaching powerfully and he's he's saying things that are very relevant to you he's connecting you know making eye contact He's, um, I mean, he's speaking. You can tell that this is somebody who's really led by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, you just come in there, you sit down, listen, you go home. The whole week, the message is still with you. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. And it kept, it made us keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And, I, and one of the things that I would like to say about Bishop Bridge as well is that he's somebody who, who listens. There, if, if if there's an issue, you know, you can always approach him. It was approachable, somebody you could talk to, you know. And um, wow, in those days, in those days, from from the pulpit, he looked like a very hard man, you know, very difficult man. But then, <laughs> when you engage him on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you discover there's a very soft side, the father, the caring leaders, leaders, pastor side of him, 
you know. So it was it was very um, it was like a breath of fresh air to be able to go to someone and talk to the person, and he was there, willing to listen, to 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 speak and give advice and direction. So I think that that's one of the things that really, I mean, maybe caused us to to, to connect with him when we first joined the church. Wow. Okay. There's a point in um, the Art of Leadership chapter, rally people around you, listen to people's yes. problems. It describes what yes. you're saying exactly. Because people feel psychologically closer to you when you allow yes. them to speak. Certainly. Certainly. People, I mean, I am listening Listening to people, is, 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 it's, um, it's a great blessing because listening is an art that is that is missing these days. In many people, many people don't listen. Many people are always um, waiting for their turn to speak. So, to have somebody who would just sit there and listen to you, you know, just listen to you. And many times, you would listen and listen and listen. You would you would expect him to be very judgmental or to say something to put you down. But then he just doesn't say anything. You know, <laughs> pray with you. You know, it was it was it's amazing. It was just a breath of fresh air to to, to meet someone like that, and who was who was genuinely interested in people either because uh, you, you get to meet many people but many people are not interested in you genuinely they just they just want to use you or get something out of you but he was someone who was genuinely really genuinely interested in people and that that i think that thing made people keep coming back to him because the, the man was really genuine that's amazing the art of listening as you put it there should be a book on that don't you think I, I think so. I think there should be a book on having listening. <laughs> should, will, will you write listen, it? Listening is a very powerful thing. Yeah. Everybody's in a hurry to say something. So you're right. There should be a book out there on the art of listening. I don't know if somebody has, has written a book like that, but if we have someone listening who is thinking of writing something, yes, maybe you could pursue that. Could you know, a, good a place book to start. entitled The Art of Listening. That would be very great. Mm. And especially for our current generation of people. Yes, certainly. You're right. If you're listening, write that book. Reverend Jerry and I will buy it. <laughs> Your first two customers. You've got them be willing to read it, certainly. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, speaking more on rallying people around you, you've been a pastor. Yeah. You've been appointed a pastor um, over a decade, a reverend minister as well. You've, you know, led many different kinds of people. Um, what are some of the most effective ways of rallying people around you? Um, we've mentioned listening. And definitely when people feel that you're listening to them, you know, they feel that you, res you respect them and that you're concerned about them. Uh, that's one technique. Are, sure. there, are there any other ways, um, especially in the book, that you have found that, you know, sort of bring people closer to you? I, th I think that one of the ways to get people close to you is to connect with people or to make people feel comfortable in your company um, is to be an encourager. You know, the book talks about uh, noticing when somebody has made an effort to achieve something. I think people people are really the world that we live in today puts, or or, or I'll say the world that we live in today is a very difficult world, and um, many people are trying their their best, but many people don't have people to encourage them. And I think as a leader, one of the things you can do to connect with people and to get people coming back to you is to be somebody who encourages people. Notice very little things that people do, little efforts that they make, and encourage them. Try to be somebody who lifts people up, not put people down. You know, because the world already puts a lot of people down and people are struggling to, to rise up. So it, a leader must be that naturally one who is always speaking good things, you know, saying good things to people. Not flattery. I don't mean to flatter people. Yeah. But at least let's notice little efforts, appreciate the efforts that people make and, um, you know, encourage them and try to point them in the right direction. Mm. And I think another thing that we can do is to be interested in people's aspirations and goals. You know, people, wow. sometimes people come you know, around leaders because they notice that the person has something to impart. So basically to be interested in what they want to do in life and to try and point them in the right direction. And if, if, if they're not in the right direction, and also to try and factor in as a leader and a pastor, to try and factor in the God factor in your conversations. In as much as you want to, you want to encourage them and point them in the right direction and get them to try and achieve something. Also not forget the God factor. Yeah, so try and also get them to see that there's a role that they can also play in the kingdom. 
And um, that has been one of the things that I've, I've used in my life. And I think I would also say that my past is uh, someone like Bishop Bridget has also used in the past in my life and still does. You know, that the most important thing is that no matter what you achieve, if, if God is not part of it, then your achievements are really useless. Because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So I think that the God factor is so key. So when people come to us as leaders, as we encourage them, as we are involved in helping them to achieve their goals and their aspirations in life, we should try and also include the God factor, that God is very powerful and God should be a part of everything that we do. And I think another thing that helps to keep people around you is the smile. You know, the smile, mm. the smile, the smile, very, 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 very powerful. You know, it's, it's, it's just something that makes, it draws people to you. That smile on the face always draws people to you. Definitely. You know, and many times, many times you may, you may, you may, you should be conscious of what, what the sort of facial expression you're projecting. Because many times when people see us and we look so serious and we are lost in thought, it really scares them or puts them off. But as long as we're smiling and we're keeping that smile on the face, it's very warm and it's very drawing. So I guess those are a few things that we can we can actually talk, which are which really in the book. There are many other things, but for me, those are the things that have helped me to connect with people. Yeah. If you want more Christian videos to fuel your faith, one day we won't be on this earth anymore. And to help you grow in grace, today to proclaim Jesus Christ. Then subscribe to Rated Jesus Christ Videos by Richie Rich Walker. Support us by watching, pressing like, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to help us reach 1,000 subscribers. We are living and working to make his name high. Inspired and edified? Then look for The Richie Rich Show, a program for all ages and all walks of life. We talk about the Lord Jesus, gifts and talents, and more with fresh clips from all over. So come on down. Watch it on the computer, the tablet, mobile phone. Well, not every phone. Watch it at home. Watch it on a train. Watch it while you're running. You'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll be entertained and edified.
Wow, I, I didn't know, I didn't, I, I really didn't know that. But yes, I think that is something that, um, that over the years, I'd say, developed to, to, to really try and say something positive and something nice to see and to appreciate the little things that people do. I guess what you do, I also, I mean, follow you on Facebook, so I guess I see a lot of what you do and I'm also encouraged by it, you know, you're out on the street by yourself many times evangelizing, you know, in, in the heart of London. And that's really great because you don't find many young people doing what you do. So, yes, you're really also doing a good job. God bless you for everything that you do. And um, I, I, I'm also encouraged by it when I see it. So it's great. Wow. Well, there you go. Encouragement. I mean, always look for the little things that people do and point Certainly. them out and go for them. The other thing that you mentioned that's quite interesting is the smile. Um, if there's one thing I remember about Reverend Jerry physically that I'll always remember is just your smile. You've got such a great smile. <laughs> wow, we thank God. And yeah, naturally, you... naturally people, sorry, naturally people don't want to, uh, you know, stick with people who are just cold and crisp. I think the book, the book says, you know, certainly. Uh, a smiling person you know naturally you just want to be around a smiling person a joyful person all the time certainly and... I, I i think that one of the things that happens is that when people when, when when you smile or when people smile it just tells anybody who's watching you that you are not so engrossed in yourself and with your problems you know so yes you can come and talk to me i'm approachable you know come 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 and let's talk come and let's chat so i guess that yeah you're, you're right that's 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 the power of the smile. The smile takes your your mind off you and, and begins to place it on others and tells it just informs other people that listen, they are more or, 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 or more or less welcome to, to talk to you about anything at all. So you're absolutely right. The smile. Wow. I never looked at it that way, that it opens you up to people literally and shows people that hey Certainly. I'm here. Wow. Okay. Certainly. Beautiful. I mean, I could go on for so long <laughs> about this chapter. It it probably is my favorite chapter of this great book um, because it's such an important point. If you can't get people, if you can't rally people around you, what can you do? Where is, who are you leading apart from yourself? Certainly, certainly. I mean, anybody who's, um, I remember, I think John Maxwell was one who said that if you don't have people following you, then you're not a leader. You're just taking a walk. So one of the things that a leader must be able to do is be able to get people around him and to be able to get people following him. So I think you're right. It's one of the it's one of the most important chapters in the book, if not the most, is how to get people to come close to you. And you can only influence them if they if they start or once once they are drawn to you. So getting them to come close is the first step to influencing them. So that's why it's it's such an important chapter in this book. And I have spoken um, on this chapter many, many times. Really love it. Love reading it. Love looking at it. Now and again, I ask myself, what can I learn, you know? And that's a great thing about the books. Um, the books are so interesting and so value-adding that it's not something that you just read and put down, you know? The Art of Leadership is a book that I have by my bedside. It's like my second kind of Bible. Every day I look into it to see what points I can glean um, that I can add to myself naturally to improve myself self naturally and to help to help me become a better leader and to help me do what I do even better and um, tell you what this book is so great so yes we really love having that book it's a very powerful book amazing amazing and I can definitely see that you know you're a, a master of rallying people around you in particular um, one of my friends from a previous church that you were pastoring. I won't mention who, but you'll know her once I say. Um, she was just telling me um, how, oh, Reverend Jerry has uh, linked me with a brother all the way in Australia, and I'm here in London. <laughs> and... Plug in! <laughs> <laughs> and, Plug in. It, and it's amazing that you've gone from, you've gone from London rallied people around you here you know caused people to love you and love them you know with the love of god gone to another continent another country loved people there led people there to the point that you can you could even actually bring people together into a, a godly relationship 
that, that that's quite something <laughs> forgive yes um that's, that's amazing <laughs> We talk, we talk about that <laughs> yeah this was somebody that she's um and i guess that she's also been um very great in that she's she's um she's somebody who is also very 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 loving you know and um really was is be, became part of the family you know so she's always been with me and um at a point when i met this gentleman who you know was looking for something i thought okay why not you know so I'm glad that they hit it off. <laughs> but yes, it, it's, it's it's part of the work. <laughs> it's so part of the work, yeah. indeed. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, just to uh, close off from this fantastic interview, I could I could talk to you all night. And I mean, if possible, I think we've got to have you on again one of these days. Not too soon. People have got to feel the hunger. And then just at the peak of hunger, we'll serve them a nice meal. <laughs> No worries. Um, do you have any final words, Reverend, for any would-be missionaries like you or future pastors or aspiring ministers? Any final words, anything to say or add? Well, I think, I think for those who are looking forward to do missions work, you know, um, it's, it's, it's great. I would encourage young people to, 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 to get involved in the work of the missions because when you're in a church like Lighthouse, it's amazing how much you know without knowing how much you know. You know, it's amazing. You Once you've been in the church for a while, you've heard great messages, great sermons. You've got the books. You've got the Macarius. You've got the um, Macanene. You've got the Poemano. You've got your pastors preaching to you every Sunday, Tuesday. You know, you're, you're so filled with information. You have so much knowledge about the Bible. And you don't know how much of a minister you are until you step out there um, and you start you start doing the work. So I guess that for anybody who's young and has been in the system for a while, I'd encourage you, you know, find something, a um, mission field to go to where you can also, I mean, help the work, you know, help the work. And um, one of the great, one, one of the things you know about missions is that uh, it's, it's hard work. It's not easy because you are far away from home. Many times you're on your own. You're out there. There is an element of loneliness. You know, many times you have to adapt. You know, to a, a different style of living. You you may not be able to live like the way you live and have the things that you used to have when you're safe. When you say some, when you're from somewhere like the UK or London or you know, I mean, a very developed place like that, like on this island, you don't have McDonald's, you don't have KFC, you don't have those sort of things. But then you still got to be able to to live and um get the mission uh, i mean get the mission work going on so you really have to adapt to a new style of living adapt to i mean different people and basically i think the most important thing is to preach the gospel you know the missionaries of old they went to places where i mean nobody wanted to go to they went to places where i mean people were not even enlightened and didn't know much about life but they still went there and they lived there and did what they had to do so i guess that you must be ready to sacrifice you must be ready to change your style of living your mentality about things you know and ready to go anywhere where the lord sends you and to do what god has asked you to do so i guess that for the missionaries yes those who are really interested in missions i'd encourage them you know it's it's great it's um it's it's amazing and so life impacting when you see how your work is also influencing other people and changing other people and for those who are you know aspiring to be leaders certainly you know one of the things you must that you must be able to connect with people you know connect with people and if you're going to lead you've got to be thinking about people many times people are very difficult to lead people are very difficult to be with and that's why many people shy away from leadership because i mean leading people is hard work uh, people will betray you. People are, are disrespectful. People do not understand. Many times you're even trying to help them. They don't understand. So that's what makes the task of leadership quite difficult. But I guess that, you know, once we understand that this is what it takes, you know, when you start it, you don't stop. You know, and it's great because it's it's um, amazing how people are impacted when they are drawn to somebody who's a genuine leader and somebody who's interested interested in them so i guess that you know it's um it's great on both fronts you know missionary work 
leadership work, especially Christian leadership work, um, working in the church, taking up roles, you know, being a shepherd, going up to become a pastor and going on to do other things. I would I would really encourage it. And I'll tell you, listen, there is you have nothing to lose but all to gain, even though it's hard, but you still have all to gain and nothing to lose. So go for it. And for many people, the little things we do in church really helps us, even in our secular lives. You know, many of the skills that we've learned in church have gone a long way to helping some of us in our secular lives, how to connect with people, how to be with people, how to influence people. You know, it's amazing. These are skills that are being sought after even in the secular world. So where where, where better to develop these skills than in the house of God, you know, and take them elsewhere with you. And something, a skill that you develop will really stays with you, never leaves you. So you can use it in many different phases of life. So yes, for the young missionaries and young leaders, I would say it's a go-go. Go for it. You have everything to win and nothing to lose. God bless you. Wow. Wow. Reverend Jerry, words cannot express how deep that was, especially something like uh, these transferable skills you speak of. So many people think they've got so much to lose, you know, by going on a mission. But actually, no. serving God yeah. just adds to your life, just adds, adds and adds to your life. Personally. Oh, certainly. Certainly. I mean, you get to meet different people, you know, from diverse cultures. You get to see how people live. It's amazing. You learn so much even about yourself. You learn whether you are adaptable. You know, it's just so much. There's so much to learn about yourself. You know, um, it's it's amazing. So going out there really helps you. You know, many times we think that we are trying to help people, but then we end up, right, that we are rather being helped. <laughs> you know, because of the many life skills that we pick up as we do the work of God. So it's it's great, yes. Well, Reverend Jerry, thank you for coming on the Keys to Leadership show. Like I said, you've got a standing invitation to come back and see us again. God bless you, Mr. Walker, and um, hopefully we'll catch up again. God bless. My love and prayers to your wife and children, and I'll see you sooner than later. I'll send and we'll pass it on. God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.